Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. Did you know our most popular video of all time is the magic pillowcase? You have watched that video more than a million times, which is so fun. And think about how practical a pillowcase really is. We use them every day, right? And it makes a great gift. Now, along the years, you've asked us a couple of questions. How do I make one smaller, maybe a travel size, and how do I make, what size would I use, what measurements would I use for a king size? Well, we've answered those questions for you in a series of videos. This will be the travel size pillow, and then I'm going to refilm the standard size pillow, and we'll also be talking about the king size. So you've been asking us, and we're responding now with those measurements, and you'll be made, able to make these adorable travel size pillows for kids and adults alike. They're just so practical, especially for the kiddos when they're traveling maybe to grandma's house, maybe traveling to daycare, or just going across town. Because we know our little ones tend to fall asleep when we're driving, and it's nice to have a pillow in the car. Similarly, when I'm flying and deadheading to trips or commuting down to Los Angeles to pick up a trip, I like to be able to cover my pillow because, you know, I don't know where those pillows have been. So these are great for us too. So it's not just for the kids. They, we get to have fun with them too. Now the first thing I want to do is let you know that we have taken pictures. We have a full color pattern that you can purchase. I'm going to show you how to do the pillow today on camera. And later on, in a separate video, we'll go over the standard size and also the king size. But if you want to have a nice, full color, step-by-step -step photo guide of how to make these pillowcases, and you can just take that with you wherever you happen to be traveling or maybe sewing from home, it's a great guide to have that'll, again, be a separate item that you can purchase if you choose to. But first thing I want to talk about is the direction of the repeat of fabric. And what am I talking about? Well, when you look at fabric, and of course we look at fabric here at Shabby all day long, the, the first thing I do is I always look at, is the, does the uh, design have a direction to it? Or is it, no matter what direction you're looking at the fabric, is it basically what we consider non-directional? This is a cute little print from Susie B. And I always look at this selvage, and that's kind of my reference point to begin. So let's just look at this fabric. You know, if I were to cut my fabric this way to make my travel pillowcase, or this way to make my travel pillowcase, or a standard pillowcase, or king size, it's not going to change the look of the pillowcase. This is what I would consider to be a non-directional fabric. So let's look at some other ones that definitely have a direction and are definitely something that you need to take into consideration so you know how much fabric to purchase. This is a fabric. Let's look at our, find our selvage again. There it is. Another cute print from Susie B. And you can see this is absolutely directional. In fact, I'll turn it so the overhead camera can pick up the direction. These cute little bears are sleeping. It looks like he's sleepwalking. It's just absolutely adorable. You can imagine that you want this to be the sight picture for your pillow, right? You want that to be upright. Well, you're going to cut your fabric a certain way. And with the travel pillowcase, and these measurements will be in our download, so you don't need to worry about writing those down. If your fabric is like this, where the design is perpendicular, meaning it's not running parallel with my selvage, in this instance, you'll be cutting your fabric in one direction, and that's gonna be 13 and a half by 33. And that piece will yield one travel pillowcase. So again, keep in mind, the design runs perpendicular, meaning the bears are not parallel to my selvage, but perpendicular, that'll be 13 and a half by 33. And again, we'll have all those measurements for you in the download. Don't worry about that. Let's look at another fabric, and this is Sensibility. This is a beautiful collection from Maywood Studio. I'll actually be making the pillow today with this fabric. Now let's look at this design. Again, referencing our selvage, notice how the stripes run parallel to the selvage. In this instance, because of the size that I'm going to need, which is 13 and a half by 33, 
I'm going to really need to buy about a yard of fabric, but because I only need 13 and a half this way, I will be able to make three pillows out of that one yard cut. So that's just something to keep in mind. While well, you, yes, have to buy more fabric, if your design is running parallel to the selvage and this is what you want the design to look like, look, look for your travel pillowcase, okay? So let's go ahead. I've cut that fabric ahead of time and I'll show you how we'll be cutting that. We'll get to the cuff and the trim in just a minute, but this is the size of my fabric. I might have even cut that too. In fact, I already know I made this pillow out of it already. So I've already gotten one out of it. So this is my piece that's left over. I can either put that in my stash or I can make two more pillows. So if, especially if you're going to be sewing for the kids and you've got a cute design, you know you're going to be making multiple pillows, you might want to, if your design doesn't matter the direction, buy the yard and you'll get three pillows out of that. Or if you have a direction or a fabric, again, where the, the design is running perpendicular, you will need to be buying the 13 and a half by 33 to make that work. All right, let me just press this out real quick. And we're going to just fussy cut this. And what do I mean by fussy cut? It means I'm just going to be very careful about making sure I'm running parallel to my design. I would not cut this fabric with it folded in half. I want to make sure that I'm opened up my fabric and I have a nice clean line running parallel, nice and parallel with my stripes. I think I've got a bigger ruler here which is really helpful. So let's look at that. All right. Now I can either start cutting here and over or I can just start from where I left over. Maybe I'll just start from where I left over here. So let's just take a measurement. We'll lay this along here, 13 and a half, it's going to be right there. So it's right next to that stripe right there. So let's go ahead and we're going to cut right next to that stripe. This is a Creative Grid 2 and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. One of the coolest things about this ruler Besides, just it's just easier to handle than the big ruler that I generally use to cut out, uh, you know, my initial cut of fabric, width of fabric cuts. I tend to use a six and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. I, but I love it just because it's just a little bit, it fits so perfectly in my hand. The other thing I love about it is if you're going to cut your own jelly roll strips, this is two and a half inches wide. It makes it so, so easy uh, to go ahead and cut your own jelly roll strips. So you can see this is the piece left over. I can easily get another strip out of that and make a third pillow. So while it is a yard of fabric, you get three pillows. So I think that's a really nice value. Um, as I was saying, if you are using a print where the, the direction doesn't matter, that would be your discretion whether you want to buy the 13 and a half, cut 33 and a half, or you, cut, you buy a full yard and get three pillows. So that's just for you to determine how many pillows you want to make. Now let's see if I've already cut this to 33. I might have because I made the pillow once before. I hope I've cut that. I think I, I think I cut it and then I trimmed it down a little bit later. Let's trim that right now to our 33. So that part's done. As you can see, it does take up a little bit of room. Okay, so that part is done. Let's put that aside. Now for the cuff, that's the portion of the pillow here, right here, the white part, and then there's the trim piece. In fact, let me just bring that out so you can see that. So this is what I want you to know the anatomy of the pillow. Doesn't matter if it's a travel pillow, doesn't matter if it's a standard or a king. We're calling this the body of the pillow. We're calling this the cuff, and this is the accent piece. For the travel size, for the travel size, you'll be cutting two pieces of your cuff, 
to six by, uh, six and a half by 13. Let me just double check that. I think that's a six. Six by 13 and a half. And for the accent pieces here, we've cut those to two and a half by 13 and a half. So you can see how this is all going to uh, line up beautifully. Step one will be to take your trim pieces and we're just going to fold those in half, wrong sides together and press. Now you can make these pillows without the accent piece. I want you to know that that is really an option. It's more for style points than anything else because I think it's just a nice little sweet accent, but you don't need to use the accent trim piece if you'd rather leave it out. So just know that's an option. Let's cut, fold those in half. Okay, perfect. So step one, when you're making the travel pillowcase, keep in mind this is a little bit different than the standard pillowcase. So if you've done the standard pillowcases, it's not, the travel is put together a little bit differently. So it's not the same exact process. All right. Step one will be to go ahead and lay out one of your cuff pieces and we'll follow that up with our trim. Notice this is my fold here, and these are my two raw edges. The two raw edges, I'll bring that just a little bit closer to me. The two raw edges cover that up so that's not so confusing. Like this, and we will grab right side down, wrong side is up. Lining everything together. I'm going to bring up the bottom portion and I'm just going to begin to kind of fold it, roll it, kind of the same idea. I have to kind of get it about, about right there, maybe a little bit higher. And now I'll bring this part up. This is the coolest part of this whole <laughs> thing is you're kind of making like a little burrito here. I'll bring that a little closer to myself and I'll start pinning. You could use Wonder Clips here if you don't want to use pins. That would work beautifully as well. I'll tell you what, I'm going to pin both ends real fast because we know those need to begin and end at that spot and we'll pin everything else in between. Now you want to make sure, I want you to see this from the overhead camera, you don't want this so close that you potentially catch that when you're sewing this together. So you want to kind of keep scooting that down in there and keep it away. And make sure you've got all three layers at the same height. Can I kind of keep checking? And now I'll pin. I know my parents um, had, used to have a fifth wheel and camped all the time. And just having these little travel pillows kind of around, such a nice accent, kind of just a nice addition. Because you know, it's a smaller space. You don't want the big pillows everywhere. So it's a really cool thing if you do a lot of camping. All right, we're going to take this to the sewing machine. Now, as I begin, I'm just going to mention what I'm going to be doing. Definitely reinforce this. You're going to start and back up. Do that at least once or twice. And you'll do the same down here. So standard quarter and seam allowance. But because we'll be pulling everything through here, there's a lot of stress that's going to happen at this seam. So for that reason, be sure to reinforce and backstitch there. So let's get started. Let's do a standard quarter and seam allowance.
Okay, this is, this is like my favorite part of this, guys. <laughs> this is the part that is just like, what's it going to look like? So you'll literally reach inside your tube, right? See that right there? You'll reach inside and just begin to pull this out. Sometimes it helps if you grab the other end, kind of grab just the, the cuff portion to try to get it out. And it's just, it's just like this coolest thing. How cute is that? Isn't that neat? And I like to start kind of from the back, so to speak, making sure my trim piece is downward. You just kind of want to flatten this out with your hands. You might even steam it a bit. Just so cute, so little. And then from the front again, isn't that just so sweet? Nice. Of course, you can just keep pressing to your heart's content. Now, on the other end, notice we have one end like that. We're going to repeat that. We will, with our cuff up and our accent piece again with the two open edges, the two raw edges, right at the top. So we have the one end, of course, so that's going to be down wrong sides together just like we did before. We bring the bottom up. Now we have even more things to kind of tuck in there, don't we? More things to kind of roll up. Let's make sure everything is lined up perfectly. You can see that cutting your pieces to the exact size is really important because everything lines up. So therefore, that needs to be the same sizes. So again, you can kind of just roll this up, kind of, it's kind of a combination of maybe rolls and folds, keeping that out of the way. Again, bringing this end up, repeating that step. So I'm going to go ahead, I will pin this, sew this, I will pull it through, just like the other one, and press it. So when I come back, I'm going to teach you then, what do you do then to finish up the pillow? So I'll be right back and I'll have those steps done. So both ends look the same now and now you'll have a choice. If you just want to make this pillow be all done with it, I get that. You can just go right sides together, pinning, making sure everything's lined up nicely, sew down one side, sew down the other, turn and flip. You will have raw and exposed edges. I don't like that for two reasons. A, the raw and exposed edges. And I know when I wash the pillow, which I definitely will be washing this pillow, those are going to fray over time. So for that reason, I really like to do French seams. This is gonna feel weird. It's going to feel wrong, but you'll see how it works out beautifully. Make sure your pillowcase is pressed, especially the top, because this can very easily take a tuck. So make sure you've smoothed everything out, you've ironed everything out. Now I want to make sure, kind of looking at that, that you want those trims to meet. So I'm really looking there right now just to kind of get started. And I'm going to put a pin in there right now. My, that's going to be my first pin. And I'm going to pin from this side so I don't have to remove the pins as I'm sewing. The thread I'm using is just a 50 weight cotton. It's a, uh, I believe that one's confetti. It's part of our neutral set. So many yards on a spool. It just, one spool seems to just last forever. And it's really outstanding uh, thread. So if you're looking for a really good quality thread, that's definitely one you might want to consider. I'll go ahead and pin the other side. 
again, I'm looking to line those up where the trim pieces meet. Let's pin there first. Pin here. And we will get started with a standard quarter inch seam allowance. French seams take just a little bit more time, but you're going to love the look and no raw edges, which is really important and something you're going to be washing and using. All right, let's get started. I'll just start on this side. I'm going to back stitch just like before. Let's go ahead and just sew down the other side as well. Let's do that right now. Okay, so you're saying, Jen, how is this possibly going to work because my seams are on the outside, I don't get this. You will get this here in just a moment. Now that we have quarter inch seam, you're going to take that ruler and trim that down now to about an eighth of an inch. So that's why I love to bring that two and a half inch ruler back out. And I'm just going to be running that right along my quarter inch seam allowance, measuring over an eighth of an inch and trimming away the other eighth of an inch. So let's do that. And we'll do this on the other side as well. Oh, left a pin in there. Laying that on my seam, measuring over an eighth. I think I, I was a little shy on this one. There we go. Okay, now what I like to do is turn it now wrong side out. If you have a seam, one of those kind of um, crease, kind of those, can't think of the name, crease turner, point turner, <laughs> the name escapes me at this point, but you get the idea of something, a tool. Let's see if I've got one with me today. I do. This is my favorite tool. I love this. I've got the nice pointed edge for things like this, and if I'm turning something that's circular, I've got this nice shovel and I can kind of just smooth everything out. It's an amazing tool and it just gets those things out of the, those points going that I really couldn't possibly achieve with just my fingers. And I'm going to run that along my side seams as well because now we know there's an eighth of an inch seam underneath there, right? We want to make sure that we roll that can kind of feel it. Of course, there's a lot of bulk here because that's your trim. Now, I will go back and pin, and what I'm doing is just basically trying to get that seam, which wants to dive in here. You see that? How it just kind of wants to stay in there, and you just kind of roll it to the outside with your fingers. So you feel that it's all the way out here, 
And once you've, you've rolled that, put a pin in there so it doesn't roll back. Again, there, I can feel it. I know this is a longer video, but once you learn how to make these, uh, you might have to watch the video once or twice. You'll be on your way, and you'll be making these for your family and friends, making them for different seasons and holidays. That, and of course, we'll repeat the same thing on the other side. I'll go ahead and show you the one side, and then I'll repeat the other side off camera. So let's go do that right now. I still like to reinforce. Now you're a full quarter, quarter inch seam here. See how nice that is? See how now I can, I wish you could feel this. Well, you'll, you'll feel it when you do your own. <laughs> is that seam is in there. In fact, let me just do the other one with you. It, it's not a big deal. So that, it just takes about a minute to kind of roll that seam out. But I want to show you how easy it is to let that stay in there. And, and if, you, if you just start sewing without rolling it out, you will, when you turn your pillow right side out, you're going to see that seam. So that's why, because I just want to show you. See how it's all tucked in now? You can't see it. But if you need some assistance, use your tool here like this. See how I can pull it out and then come right in with my pin. I kind of hold that, come right in with my pin. So if you need to use this And just be following up with your pin, kind of rolling that with your fingers. It works super well. We are so close to our pillowcase being done. Now this is a standard uh, size travel pillow. So these are, should be readily available in Joann's, uh, Walmart. I would think really any arts and crafts department of any department store would, would most likely have this. I know the other option would be, of course, to make your own pillow form maybe out of muslin and stuff it with polyfill. So that's another idea is if you really want to do your own, that's another option. All right, let's go sew this last one. We are so close to being done. Sometimes it there's a little bit of a, a, quite a bit of bulk where the accent piece comes together. Sometimes your machine might struggle. I might have to lift the presser foot over that spot just a touch to help it get past that. But that's really the only little area where the machine might, might struggle just a touch. So isn't that neat? Now we'll turn it right side out. Isn't that neat that our seams are tucked inside? Those are called French seams. You can really do that with any project. It's not unique to this pillowcase. Anytime you're doing maybe a handbag, and a lot of times uh, handbag patterns that I've seen, you end up with these raw seams inside the bag. Well, if you're gonna use the bag, or maybe even wash the bag, that will become frayed unless you maybe use a serger or something else. So that's an option for you to do French seams with other projects as well. Look how beautiful our pillowcase is. Look how fun that is. You're going to want to do this in so many different fabrics. And like I said, you'll be giving these to friends and family for gifts and birthdays and all kinds of seasons and holidays. So that's all there is to making the travel pillowcase. As I said, I'll be also refilming the standard size pillowcase, giving you measurements for the king size. We'll have the full color step-by-step -step photo instruction available if you'd like as an additional um, item that you can purchase. 
and that will include all three sizes and it's a great reference so you're not having to sit there and go back and watch a video to like what are those sizes how did that work so thank you for sharing a part of your day i know it's been a longer video but hopefully you've enjoyed learning how to make the travel pillowcase and i'll see you on the next shabby fabrics video